particular clip has to do with hate crimes and now professionals being given a class within uh, the uh, hate crime laws. This absolutely to me makes no sense. I'm just going to say what I got to say now. If you're going to create a hate crime for police officers, okay, which are already protected because if you do something to a police officer, it's when you are charged, you're not charged with, let's see, either hitting, assaulting, or killing someone. You are specifically charged with hitting, assaulting, or killing a police officer. It has its own separate designation already. So to include it in uh, hate crime statutes is ridiculous. If you're going to do that, that any crime should be a hate crime because if people don't like police officers and they get charged with a hate crime, suppose someone doesn't like a doctor, suppose someone uh, doesn't like a lawyer uh, or a dentist or any other profession. This absolutely makes no sense. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. I'm going to let the, uh, the clip run and possibly comment at the end, but I think I've already said enough. All right, folks, it's the first of a kind bill. Louisiana is set to expand a hate crime law to, keep, to include cops. Democratic Governor John Bell Edwards is expected to sign the law, the so-called Blue Lives Matter bill. The law will weigh crimes against law enforcement officers, firefighters, and other first responders, the same as attacks motivated by race, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. Supporters of the bill say there is a concerted effort to terrorize and attack police officers. Critics say extending hate crime protection to a professional class for the first time could weaken the protections in place for people who endure race or gender-based violence. Joining me via Skype from New Orleans is IJK Obedamai, the organizing co-chair for the New Orleans chapter of Black Youth Project 100. Um, th this is confusing to me because this notion that you already don't have maximum penalty against police officers is unbelievable. You already have it. Yeah, I mean it's it's really surreal when you when you think about it that a, a group of people that are effectively state agents uh, that carry a badge and have a lethal firearm on their hip should be considered as a protected class uh, in the historical context of people who have been historically uh, vulnerable and assaulted, like uh, people with race, gender, sexual orientation. Um, and, and given the context of having almost no convictions uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement over the last couple of years, uh, this is really just insulting uh, and, and beyond uh, rationality. Allison Padilla Goodman, uh, South Central Regional Director for the Anti-Defamation League. Allison, uh, weighed on this bill. I mean, does it make sense to add first responders, emergency responders, to a hate crime bill? Good morning. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, we are great advocates for strong hate crimes bills. We're also great advocates for penalties against crimes against law enforcement. These two issues are very separate, though. Hate crimes are intended to um, to talk for crimes committed against somebody who has a bias against their race, religion, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, disability. Um, adding a professional category into it totally deflects from the original intention. And we're very concerned about it confusing the intention of the bill and the education about hate crimes, which are already underreported. Um, first of all, when you talk about in Louisiana, um, the governor is going to sign it. Mm -hmm. Why? What, what, what is his rationale for signing the bill when I can show numerous cases that there are people who are sitting in prison right now for three, four decades who, who brought harm to a police officer. Uh, I think you're right. Um, there's not much rationale. Uh, the bill soared through the House and Senate with little opposition. 
um, and it's gotten a lot of um, political support. And also, um, his family is in law enforcement. I believe his brother uh, and his father is a sheriff. And so I think he definitely is invested in continuing the mythology that police are under attack. And like you said, Roland, um, especially with the uh, data that the FBI recently released, uh, the police, there is less violence against the police uh, um, for a very long time. The, the, the violence against police is at an all-time low. Um, so there's no rationale backing this up. Um, it, it really doesn't make any sense, um, and we're against it completely. Yeah, we are as well. And one of our big concerns is that, you know, one of the, the purposes of a hate crimes bill is to help educate law enforcement on the special impact of these crimes. Hate crimes have a stronger impact than just a specific crime against one victim. They reverberate against uh, throughout communities. And if we're adding law enforcement and first responders, it totally deflects from the original purpose of the bill. Well, Leon, this is a knee-jerk reaction to the Black Lives Matter movement. It is a solution seeking a problem because there is no problem here. If you assault a police officer, you get charged with assaulting, you don't get charged with assault, you get charged with assaulting a police officer. If you take the life of a police officer, the fact that you have killed a police officer gets factored in at the sen it is an aggravating condition or circumstance that gets factored in at the sentencing phase. So it's not as though police officers aren't protected and there is absolutely no data right. to support the basis or the premise of this bill. This comes out of the shooting of a sheriff in, in a Houston. In Houston, when in fact and, the evidence shows that there was no involvement whatsoever. They don't uh, know what the motive they, was. They targeted, absolutely. Chiano. Well, I think that there's absolutely a, a necessary factor in making sure uh, law enforcement is protected, making sure emergency uh, ambulance, firefighters, making sure that they're protected. I just think this is the wrong vehicle for it. Because at the end of the day, you could spit on a police officer and get years in jail. So when you think about an issue like this, I think that it does make a mockery of the Black Lives Matter movement because police lives, absolutely they do matter, but that's never been in question for anyone. Yeah. And the data, we haven't seen it, that there's an uptick of violence against police. We see that in situations where there are protests, there may be violence, but that's to be expected in law enforcement communities. Drew Laws. So for me, uh, blue is not the, the new black. So there is this whole sentiment around <clears throat> black, uh, blue lives matter and this actual law. When you think about uh, the impact and what it's stating, and I'm just appalled that even this Democratic governor, whether he has fa family or not, in this would actually try to change what the sentiment of what the hate crime law is about. Nobody did, you know, to be a police officer, you are well protected, you have <laughs> you are packing a gun, you are ready and, and able to actually execute uh, something or someone that comes after you. So at the end of the day, to try to use this, I mean, for me, it shows a veil covering of, if you think about it, if it's just for a professional, um, people, then it negates about it, ne it negates the whole idea of race. It negates the whole idea of religion. And what it's saying is that even as a white male who is a police officer who is killed, um, then has this extra years added on top of the years that you got anyway if you do something to a police officer. And I just think uh, if we uh, the community allows this to happen and if we just idly sit by, we will definitely see mo more of this rolling around throughout the country. Well, well and of course, the crazy thing about this whole deal is, is very simple, uh, and that is rape, hate crimes, it's about motive. Right. How are you going to prove that, oh, my motive was to specifically target uh, a police officer? Uh, 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 Jack, hey, Allison, I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Okay, and as I've said in the past, the governor of uh, Louisiana is a Democrat. And I have said it repeatedly that just because you got a D behind your name doesn't necessarily mean uh, that uh, you are truly uh, in the democratic fold. And uh, for this guy to sign this particular law, I mean, it, it absolutely makes like no sense whatsoever.